Hi there everyone, we're back at the Royal Society. I'm here with the head librarian, Keith Moore, and yet again, we're looking at some expedition films. And today, we're talking about Halley Bay in Antarctica. And this is a place that the Royal Society has a long association with, Keith. That's right. In the late 50s, there was a, a major expedition there. They set up a base for International Geophysical Year and spent several years there, in fact. And in fact, there are still Halley Bay bases today. So we have this film that was made from footage taken at Halley Bay. On the 6th of January, 1956, we landed in Halley Bay and found a way onto the top of the 100-foot ice cliffs. The raft of heavy timbers forms the foundation of our hut. But nearly every day, snow would have to be dug off before starting work. The gable ends were assembled on the snow and required everyone except the cameraman to lift them up. So, Keith, what's the point of this film? It's like this, this big production with music mm. and narration. Why was this film made? Well, the Royal Society was making a major effort to get to Antarctica to do science there. And this is slightly a more fulsome version of movies that were made from other expeditions. This is really high production values. It was a serious piece of cinema. Antarctica was uh, still a place that people knew about, associations with Captain Scott and so on, so they knew it would be popular. But what they were actually doing there, well, people didn't really know. So it's like their version of YouTube videos? That pretty much it, yeah. Longer and um, possibly more expensive production values, but the, the stars aren't as handsome, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing about these films is they're kind of, they're quite a varnished impression of what happened. Mm. So the thing Keith wants to show us today is a little bit more about what you don't see in films like this. So while we look at all this amazing footage and enjoy it, and we're really grateful to have it, mm. we're going to show you some documents and some items here that give you a truer impression of what it was like to be a scientist working in Antarctica. So this is a, a file of medical reports from 1956, 57 and 58, as Halley Bay base was being set up and used. They're just giving overall descriptions of the kinds of uh, problems that the, the uh, staff were having there, the injuries they had, but other things too. I mean, there's a lot here. The effects of climate have not been severe. There were two cases of snow blindness on the 9th of January. In one case, the individual was driving all day with sunglasses instead of goggles. Mm -hmm. Trying to look cool, you know, it, it pays in the end. Okay. The effects of the sun on the skin were mm. severe during unloading. Faces were red and blistered. This happened in spite of the use of a variety of creams and lotions. So they're the learning as they go along. This is the earliest medical report. They've just got there. They're beginning to register some of the effects. They will learn, of course, but here they're making some pretty elementary mistakes, I think. Insomnia, this is interesting. So we're getting into more psychological territory here. It says insomnia affected some individuals, particularly in May and June. Barbiturates were administered without any marked benefit. It says here, the mental effects of close confinement of a party this size over winter were very much as might be expected. Excessive irritability certainly made its appearance from time to time and tendency to complain about trivialities was not absent. That's a very British way of saying yep. it. Against this, a great deal of tolerance, patience and good humour was displayed and outlook in general was well adjusted to circumstances. We expected blizzards and we weren't disappointed. But I think you'll agree they have a fascination and beauty of their own. But the drifting snow would get through the smallest holes. And the Met Man had to clean out his equipment before he could read his temperatures. And you've got some more documents here that give more of an insight into what was going on behind the scenes. What was going mm. on when the camera wasn't rolling? They were keeping physiological records, as you saw there, but they were keeping other kinds of, of diaries and records too. You can see straight away here, there's an address to the gentleman of the base following the production of the first issue of the Halley Comet. So they kept a, a magazine going during the time at Halley Bay. So we now come to files marked the magazine. Here we start having some copies, but it's not called the Halley Comet here, it's called the Magazette. Is this like a so precursor? To yeah, so the Magazette after the Magadan, which is, is the ship. Oh, okay. 
we have here a crossword in the Megazette. So this is how people are keeping themselves occupied. This is incomplete. James there behind the camera had the idea that we photograph that and make that available for you to try and complete the crossword at home. So if you're really, really nerdy, you can do that. Links in the description. Anyway, so there's lots and lots of copies of the Magazette, but we want the but Halley Comet. We do, we do. So here we have ah. the Halley Comet Christmas number. Look at that. Christmas edition of the Halley Comet. Like they've splattered ink or paint on there yeah, somehow. They, they've just put a, a shape down and yeah. they've blown paint Gorgeous. through a straw. Gorgeous. Yeah. Articles, public notices, some kind of test, poetry, and it looks like they made multiple copies. They haven't been able to print this. They've had to redo the artwork each time. So That's you've got right. all these copies of the Halley Comet. Clearly they, they went the extra mile. Look at this one. This is the mid-winter 1958 edition. We have this again handcrafted image, presumably of the Aurora Australis there. Gorgeous. And we look inside. So presumably whoever was responsible for the comic had to make multiple copies of this. And then they did, yeah. They could copy the typescript, but they couldn't presumably copy the, the illustrative material, so they just had to do it multiple times. Okay, so there we go. Again, announcements, news. But there's more. Christmas 58. Cover art's getting more complicated now. All the pictures. All right. And here's another one. Easter 1958. That's a pretty one, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a nice sledge dog there. I can't believe they've like done this like this cover over and over again for everyone. Mm. And you know, same again. We have printed pages, things that are going on, stories, entertainment, things like that. The Emperor Penguins had started congregating on the sea ice before the onset of winter <coughs> and greeted one another noisily on arrival. <coughs> This appears to be the only aggressive action of these otherwise very dignified birds. With the sun now almost gone, we left these birds to their mating and incubating through the dark winter. And just finally, what have we got here, Keith? Well, dinners and, and lunches would have been a big thing, of course. Communal events probably here are the, the menus, again, with uh, hand-illustrated covers. There's the Christmas menu, the midwinter menu. They've done these lovely pictures on mm. them, hand sort of painted. Let's have a look at the Christmas menu. Yeah, let's we? see what they're getting for Christmas dinner. Here we go. Christmas what? Day, December 25, 1958, Royal Society Base, Halley Bay. That, that's pretty good, actually, isn't it? We start with a crawfish salad. Mm -hmm followed by bottled roast turkey, blackcurrant sauce, roast potatoes, asparagus, tomatoes, and then Christmas pudding, minced tart, vanilla sauce. This is making me hungry. Mm. Fruit salad, jelly, biscuits, crystallized fruit, Christmas cake, dates, nuts, figs, coffee. And, and then, of, of course, the queen, the loyal toast, and then cigars afterwards. Okay, so the queen means toast the queen. So there we go. You've seen all this amazing footage, these films from Antarctica, and they're fabulous to watch, but hopefully this has given you some idea of well, maybe how much downtime they had, <laughs> but also the sort of things they were doing to occupy themselves when they weren't out working in the freezing cold. Mm, yeah. They raised this flag for about a year yep. in the the harsh winds of Antarctica Indeed. and we can see it's really gone to town here and this is what they came back with. That tells a story all of its own. We've got a map here by the way, this gives you an idea of where they were down on the coast Indeed. there. So here's Halley Bay and uh, Penguin Leap where the flag was flying is marked right there. And you can see also here Emperor Bay. 